Hi, second grade. It's Miss Clapp. I hope everyone's doing well, staying safe and healthy. Um, this week, we're going to be doing some subtraction. So we did addition the past two weeks. We're going to switch to subtraction. Um, before we get started, just to review, you guys should be doing 30 minutes a day for iReady, and your assigned lessons will be in blue when you sign on. You should be doing those for half an hour. There's reading and math, so make sure you're doing both. Um, and not just focusing on one. So maybe switch, do 15 minutes on one, 15 minutes on another, or switch days. Um, just so you're getting the experience for both of them. Also, you should be watching the videos on Monday or Tuesday and having your materials prepared or at least um, started your work so that when we meet for Zoom on Wednesday, um, we can go over some things, answer any questions you may have about any of the assignments and things like that. So please be sure you're watching the math, reading, and writing videos every Monday or Tuesday and having that prepared, okay? So we're going to get started today. So we're going to do our fact fluency just like we've been doing, just to warm up our brains to get ready to do some math. But this week we're going to be using subtraction since we're going to be working primarily on subtraction for the next two weeks. And then we'll do a combination on our last week of addition and subtraction, okay? So... I'm going to give you some flashcards just like before. You can call out the answer. Um, if you see back here, I have a number line, so you can even use my number line to be counting. Um, you can use your fingers. You can use a hundred chart you may have at home, whatever materials that help you with uh, one digit addition and subtraction. So remember, today's subtraction. Okay? I'm going to hold them up. Okay? Call out the answer. So you can do subtraction two different ways. Remember, you can count up. So you'd start at two and go three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the answer would be six. Or if you like just taking away, you can start at eight and go backwards, take away two. So you'd go eight, seven, six, right? Took two away. Your choice which way you enjoy doing the most or which way you think uh, makes it a little easier for you. So the answer for this one, six. Okay, four minus two. I like to count up, but like I said, you can count down and subtract. I just think counting up for me is a little bit easier. So I go two, three, four. So my answer, four minus two gives me two. Seven minus four. I'm going to count up again. So I'm going to start at my small number, start at four, and I'm going to count up till I get to seven. See how many that takes me. So I'd go four, five, six, seven. So my answer, three. Once again, you can count up or subtract. So if I'm subtracting, I'll show it the other way. You start with nine, so if you're using your fingers, you'd start with nine fingers and you'd put down four and see how many you have left over. So for example, if I started with nine, I put down one, two, three, four. How many do I have left? I have five left, so my answer is five. So nine minus four gives me five. Seven minus two. Once again, if you want to take away, you'd start out with seven and you take away two. So another one, five. Okay. Remember, any number minus itself will always give you zero. So five minus five, zero. Right off the top of your head. If the numbers are the same when you're subtracting, the answer will always be zero. Okay. This one I think counting up is easier because five is very close to six. So if I go five, six, I go up one. So my answer would be one. Six minus five gives me one. And my last one, six minus four. So I think, once again, four is very close to six. Counting up is easier for me, so I'd go four, five, six, okay? So now that we got your brains working for our subtraction, um, I actually have some poems that I used in class, so these should look really familiar to you um, for subtraction, okay? So we're going to ignore the middle one for this week. We'll be focusing on that next week. Um, so we're just going to worry about the top one and the bottom one. So up here, it says more on top, no need to stop. So that's saying more, meaning the number eight is more than the number five, number on top. So no need to stop. You just take your numbers. You would ignore the five at first. You just take them and subtract down, okay? So more on top, no need to stop. We'll worry about this next week. And then down here, we kind of went over this during our warm-up. But it says numbers the same, zero's the gain. So anytime you have 
the same number on the top and the bottom, it will always be zero. So they gave an example, 58 minus eight. In the ones place are both eights. So eight minus eight gives you zero because it's the same number. So we're gonna try and keep this in mind. Um, if you wanna pause the video, you could even write down the examples. Just do the first one and the last one for this week and then we'll worry about this middle one. It gets a little trickier next week. So if you wanna pause it, you can. If you remember the poem from class and you don't need to, that works too. But we're just gonna kind of refer to this throughout um, our work. So you can see behind me, this week, move my chair back. This week we're gonna do subtraction without regrouping. So that means we're not borrowing from our neighbor. We're literally just lining up our ones and subtracting. Remember, starting at the top, going down, you have to do it that direction to get the right answer. In your ones place, your tens place, and your hundreds place. We always start at the right, which is our ones, and then we move over to the left, okay? So this week we're not gonna do any regrouping. It's just like we said, more on top, no need to stop. So that will be all of ours this week, okay? So we're gonna start out here. Um, this is very similar to the flashcards we were doing. So it's just ones. So you're gonna start at eight and you're gonna go back two, okay? Like I said, you choose if you want to start at two and go up to eight and see how many. You go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, you can do it that way. Or you can start with your big number and go backwards to the left two spots. Once again, whatever you're more comfortable with. So you can start at eight and go back to one, two. We landed on six. Both ways, we still get the answer of six. Okay, so it's whatever you prefer. So I write my six down there. Remember, you always write your answer right under the place value that you're doing. So we're doing ones, my six goes right in my ones place. So now we're gonna move over. I did it in a different color. Um, you see the green line right through here. I'm just splitting up to make sure my ones are lined up and my tens are lined up. And I even wrote O over here for ones and T over here for tens. It's just for me to keep track what I'm doing. I know I always have to start in the ones, so sometimes labeling it is a good reminder for me that I always know I'm going to start here. So remember, you start in your ones, six minus four. So if you want to go backwards and do it that way, you start at six and you go one, two, three, four. So I land on the number two. So I have to make sure when I write my answer, remember, I did the line all the way down here just to really keep track until I get into the habit of making sure they're lined up and stay lined up. So I put my two down here, okay? It's right under my ones place, that's where I did it. Now I move over, now I'm doing my tens. I have a one and then I have nothing below it. So it'd be the same as one minus zero. So anything minus zero, number stays the same. So it would still be one. If you're not sure about that, you just go to the number one and you're not taking anything away, so I'm not jumping anywhere, so I'd still be on the number one, okay? Now we're gonna move over here. Once again, always start in your ones place. You always start at the top and work your way down, okay? So you always start at your big number, seven. So I'm gonna put my finger on seven, and I'm gonna go back three. So I start here, work my way down. Start at seven, and I'm gonna go back three. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. So what number did I land on? Landed on four. So seven minus three will give me four. Remember, write it down. And if you need to put the lines in between like I did, go for it, whatever works for you. I think it's a really good way to line it up. Um, you could also, if you have lined notebook paper, just turn it sideways because then the lines would go up and down and you could write them in like that. That also makes it a little easier to organize. Now I'm doing two minus one. Remember, you always have to start at your top, work your way down. So start at the number two, go back one, and I land on one. So 27 minus 13 gives me 14. Remember, if you wanna check your work, um, a way that we did it in class, a good way to check it is you add your two small numbers and they should equal your large top number if you wanna check it. So for example, I do, my answer plus, because you do the opposite, my answer plus my other number should equal your large number. Four plus three is seven, one plus one is two. So they check, those. your answer and your top number will be the same. That's a good way to just kind of check your work, okay? 
um, just so you know you're not making a silly mistake or anything. Now we're moving on and we're adding into our hundreds. So I have two sets of lines because now I have hundreds, tens, and ones. Same process though, you start in your ones place, then move to your tens, then move to your hundreds, okay? And you keep doing that no matter how many place values, you still always start out in your ones. So remember my ones place is far to the right. I have it labeled as an O for ones just to remind myself. Eight minus eight. Well, if I go back to here and look at the bottom, number's the same, zero's the game. So I don't even have to subtract and say eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. I know based off this, any number minus itself will always give me zero. So eight minus eight, zero. Okay, now I'm moving over to my tens place, starting at the top and going down. So we've talked about this in class and we kind of did it for one of our uh, fact floats at the beginning. When you have a number and you subtract zero, the number stays the same. Okay, if you're not sure, remember you can check it on here. Start off at seven, don't take anything away. My finger is still at seven. So seven minus zero gives me seven, okay? Now, once again, number's the same, zero's the game. So I don't have to put anything down. If you'd like to put a zero, just to hold the place value, you can. Um, but 178 minus 108 gives me 70, is my total. Like I said, if you wanna check your work, since we've been practicing addition last week, you're more than welcome to. So you'd add your two small numbers right here. So I'd add 108 plus 70, make sure you line it up correctly, ones under ones, 10 under 10. Eight plus zero is eight, seven, zero plus seven is seven, and one plus zero is one. This number matches, so I got my answer right. Just a way to check, okay? Now we're getting a little harder. We're once again doing hundreds, but we're moving up to higher numbers. Start in my ones, nine minus one. If you're not sure, start at nine, subtract one. 9 minus 1, I landed on 8. So 9 minus 1 gives me 8, okay? 8 minus 3, because remember I'm moving over, keep moving over, 1 to the left. 8 minus 3, start at 8, I'm going to go back 3. 1, 2, 3. 8 minus 3 gives me 5. If you are not sure if you're doing it right, flip it like we did. 8 plus 3, or 5 plus 3 gives me 8. Double check it. Two minus two, remember, number's the same, zero's the game. So you can either put a zero or just leave it blank, okay? So 289 minus 231 gives me 58. If you wanna check it with addition, right over here, you can do the same thing. So what you do is you add 231 plus 58, because you want to get this big number up here. This is the number that's supposed to match up here, okay? So, 1 plus 8 gives me 9. 3 plus 5 gives me 8. 2 plus nothing gives me 2. I double check. This number matches this number, so it means I did my subtraction correctly. Just a quick check. And the last one. So this one's kind of tricky. This is my challenging one that I wanted to give you guys, see if I could maybe... Um, trick you up a little bit. I'm sure you guys will get it though without any problems. So remember, going back to this, number is the same, zero is the game. So six minus six, number is the same, zero is the game. Six minus six, we just did it. Four minus four, number is the same, zero is the game. So my answer is zero, okay? If you want to double check it because it looks weird, you would do 466 plus zero. You still get 466. So you did it right. So that was kind of your bonus one. A little tricky. I'm sure you guys did awesome though. So you guys are going to have some problems that you're going to work on. There's seven of them. And they start out with just subtracting ones. Then it gets a little more challenging and we add in tens. And then we have like our bonus ones that are using our hundreds. So if um, you're having a hard time, just try and do the ones with the ones and tens, okay? If you're able to keep going, then challenge yourself and try and do all seven of them, including your hundreds. 
So it's kind of up to you how whoever you're working with at home um, can kind of gauge how it's going and, and which ones you should be working on. And try and bring these um, to your Zoom meeting, just because I'm going to go over the ones that you're going to do, and um, we'll go from there. Okay? Now I want you guys to try some on your own practicing. If you get stuck, you can have someone at home help you. Um, if you're not sure where to start or how to subtract a certain number, remember, use your hundreds chart. Create your own number line. Use your fingers. If you need manipulatives, find something around the house. You can do pieces of cereal. You can do um, rocks outside to use to take away. So use what you have in the house. So your first two are going to be just subtracting ones. So number one is 9 minus 4. Number two is 7 minus 7. Now your next two are going to have ones and tens. Remember, start in your ones, then go to your tens, start at the top, and work your way down. Number three is 64 minus 10. Number four is 86 minus 31. And now your last three are going to have ones, tens, and hundreds. Remember, start in your ones, then go to your tens, then go to your hundreds. Always starting at the top and working your way down. Number five is 237 minus 124. Number six is 752 minus 650. And number seven is 892 minus 881. So try those on your own. Reach out to your teacher, or if I'm your teacher, reach out to me, uh, Miss Clothier or Miss Lynn, if you're in their classes, if you get stuck or confused. Try to have this ready for your Zooms on Wednesday, and I can't wait to see you guys. Love you guys so much, and miss you guys.